In this video I'm going to cover the basic principles for MRI scans, uh, which is, stands for Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Imaging. I will cover the scanner, the key components of it, and what each one of those does, and then I'll go through the general procedure. Now because I'm intending this video for, to be for Unit 20 as well, the BTEC, then I won't identify which component does which function, I'll just list the key components, the key functions, and then I'll go through the procedure. So I won't necessarily link it all together, that's something for you to, to do, which is easy when you have a textbook in front of you. Okay, so let's do the scanner first. Firstly, you need a large magnet, then need gradient coils, and three, a radio frequency coil, and four is the radio frequency generator, and number five is a computer. Okay, so the, uh, the things that we need to do in no, in not in the same order as this, we need to have something which can transmit and receive radio frequency pulses, so one trans, so this has a dual function. The first hand it transmits radio frequency pulses into the body and the second function is to receive radio frequencies that are sent back by the body. And you'll see what I mean by that when I go through the procedure. We need something that can vary the field strength across the body. So um, there's my patient in the scanner and there are three dimensions here. We have Usually Z is along the body, and then Y at that, X is that. So Z is the length, Y is the height, and X is the width. So that's into the plane of the diagram there. And one of these components varies the field strength. Well, I say one of these components. There may work, there would be multiple of these components, but we're just collectively grouping them together and it would be responsible for varying field strength in that, in that plane or in that direction along that axis and along the x-axis. Uh, another of the components needs to generate the signal for the RF pulse and so it sends it to one of the other components that actually does the transmitting and then when it's received it'll go through, the, through that as well. One of the components will process all of the information that's collected and then turn it into an image, which then the radiographer can understand. And lastly, we need one of the components to produce a strong, uniform magnetic field. So those are five functions for our five components. Now we need to know how we actually go about producing an MRI image. First thing is we need to produce this strong uniform magnetic field around the patient's body. So we have a nice uniform field here. Be your magnetic field. And whenever you have a strong magnetic field like this, hydrogen nuclei will precess around the magnetic field lines. So precession is, is the key term here. Hydrogen nuclei, they precess. And what that means is that they behave like gyroscopes. If I had a spinning top that was um, spinning on this table, then it would precess because it would have the the axle of the spinning top will rotate in a conical fashion 
and that would do it would do that around gravitational field lines. So the gravitational field lines are vertical when it's precessing around them. The hydrogen nuclei will do that around magnetic field lines because they have a magnetic property. And um, what would that that's true when you have this strong uniform magnetic field. Then we will vary the strength of that field across these dimensions of body. So we'll vary the magnetic field in this direction so that it might be stronger up this end of the body and weaker down this end. So there's a linear change there. And then vary it in the x and y directions as well. And we get the strength of the, of the magnetic field at a value that we want at the particular location of the body that we're interested in. So sometimes an MRI will be taken of the knee, so we might focus in on that part of the patient. And so, so we'll um, identify a location in that body with a specific strength, uniform, sorry, a specific magnetic field strength. Now, that will cause the nuclei to to precess at a particular frequency because the frequency of precession, which is called the Larmor frequency, is proportional to the magnetic field strength. So by varying the magnetic field strength and getting it at the particular value we want there, we have the nuclei precessing at a particular value, which we can determine. I won't go into how that's done just now. Okay, so, so we, what we've done is we've identified the part of the body we're going to scan. And then we send in a radio frequency pulse. With a frequency equal to the Larmor frequency. It's going to be probably the megahertz range. What that will do is cause the nuclei there to it'll cause the nuclei to flip because it will cause them to resonate. So uh, this is an example of resonance. It causes the nuclei to resonate and that flips them into a high energy state. So they're in a high energy state now. Okay. For a specific amount of time, the nuclei will remain in that high energy state, but then they will flip back, so they will relax, and that's called relaxation. After being in the high energy state, they relax, flip back to the low energy state, which is what they were in before. In order to do that, it needs to lose some energy, and it does so in the form of an RF pulse. So it will trans the body, basically, or the nuclei in the body, will transmit an RF pulse, and we can receive that signal. So we receive it. Okay. Um, now, the time between flipping into a high energy state and relaxing back to the low energy state, that's called the relaxation time. Okay. Now, each, uh, well, the hydrogen nuclei in different molecules have different relaxation times. So this provides the way for us to identify what tissue is located at the, the tiny volume that we had specified. So that's how we find out what the tissue type is there. So for example, um, in water, so if there was some tissue or fluid there, high water content, 
then has a long relaxation time. Fatty tissue has, or the nuclei in fatty tissue have a short relaxation time. It's important to distinguish the fact that I'm talking about the nuclei in those tissue types, they have either a long or a short relaxation time. So the tissue itself doesn't have a, those relaxation times. Okay, um, the reason that an MRI scan takes a long time is because you have to scan tiny volumes of the body per, per scan. So each time you send and receive a signal, you're dealing with just a tiny volume of the body. And so to cover a large volume of the body, you know, for the knee or the head, then it takes a long time to send and receive the information multiple times to cover all the tiny volumes in the body. And if you were to do a whole body scan, it would take a long time. So usually radiographers will just home in on the, the part of the body that the doctor is interested in. And that is the procedure for MRI. If you want to get a bit more information on this, I, I produce an animation and I'll add in a link to this video so that you can access that straight from here.